Assalamualaikum dear students welcome back hopefully you watch all the lectures from 1 to uh, 18 because if you don't watch lectures sequentially you may not be able to understand the present lectures okay so because these are interconnecting lectures and uh, you must watch the lectures in sequence wise right so in lecture number 18 basically we start this lecture and we covered the uh, how to basically design a flat flat slip system we see we tried it as a without drop panel and the slab system failed although it passed in the beam shear uh, in the beam shear check but it fell in the punching shear as you see here right then we try that we have different options and those options are as under uh, and uh, here we are using the fourth option we are using the drop panels in that case you see we fixed out the uh, size of the drop panel how to fix it what points you have to be remembered and uh, we fix the size that is 5 by 5 and 10 by 10 for the interior and 5 by 5 for corner and we fix out the size of the slab on the with a drop panels right and 10 inch is fixed okay we find out the average effective depth right then we find out the uh, uh, when we use checks beam shears at different locations at the sections of d and at the sections of at the face of the drop panel similarly we check it the for punching shear and for punching shear i i left the punching shear check to you people that you must check it but you see here that in punching shear uh, the slab system is also passed right you see here that uh, our um, our uh, system is uh, basically passed in the, uh, in the in the in the beam shear sorry this is in the case of the beam shear but in uh, but in punching shear i left this check with to you people that you must check it both in the distance of d by 2 and when the critical section lies outside the drop panel right then we start uh, we basically check the column dimensions and the column dimensions is also perfect perfect then we start equivalent frame method and in equivalent frame method we uh, we see how to use the tables right uh, for um, when you have a drop panel case remember i already explained this that when we have a drop panel case we could not use table f14 right this table is used without drop panels when you have a drop panel system you have to use table uh, appendix a20 right which is in the PCA notes and uh, those tables are these okay so I already explain I calculate basically the um, stiffness k value k is b value and how to use it right uh, today we will uh, a little bit explain more uh, in detail these tables and what these values are so in that lecture we uh, we start the coefficients of fix and movement that whenever we are calculating the fix and movement i write down this formula and this formula is used in the case of a prismatic beam or prismatic slab when you have no drop panels okay so in that case the fixed end coefficient is 112 but as you see we have a drop panel right here and we have a drop panel right here so this is a non-prismatic beam so in this case basically PCA develop those charts and the charts you will see above now we need to find out the fixed and movement coefficients all right this one we need to find out M and F this value from where we got the 0 0.0915 and from where we got M and F2 and M and F3 right so remember basically the slab system is distributed into different zones in that uh, tables right you see here we have a slab which is a prismatic 
but you see we have a drop panel so in the case of the drop panel the system become non prismatic so in the if the case if we consider just layer so it is a prismatic okay in that case you can easily calculate the value of fixed end moment coefficient which is 0.0926 right from those tables and uh, remember you have to interpolate the values between these two tables right one is 0.5h and one is 0.25h okay from where i got these values uh, these values are simple um, let me show you the, these values right um, these values are here you see uniform load fixed and moment when you are uniform load over the sections so you have to calculate the values in between these and uh, in between these two values interpolate the values between these two but this one is 0.50 h and this one is 0.25 h so one time you have to calculate mnf from this table and then mnf from this table 0.5 h and then interpolate in between these two tables you got your required value right now here you see the next thing is a little bit tricky and uh, before we start you see here the sections in this table when a equals to 0 0.0 a equals to 0 0.2 basically here what they did you see after reading this paragraph you see here that appendix a20 at the end of this chapter gives stiffness coefficients carry out carry over factor and fixed end moments right at left support at left support coefficients for different geometric and loading configurations remember these tables are developed for different geometric and loading configurations a wide range of column size to span ratios right in both longitudinal and transverse direction is covered in the tables table a1 can be used for flat flat and two slab with beams table a2 to a5 are intended to be used for flat slabs and vapor slabs with various drop or solid heads depths okay table a6 covers the unusual case of a flat flat combined with a flat slab fixed end moment coefficients are provided for both uniform and partially uniform load this sentence is very important right the sentence is very very important right remember we have a uniformly distributed load and we have a partially uniform distributed load you see here this is a kind of partially distributed load because in the region of the drop panel the load intensity is different while in between the drop panel the load in the load is uniformly distributed so that why we have a partially distributed load remember the load start starting point starts from a l1 and end point is b l1 so a and b are the fraction fractional portions of the whole spans right so you see here here it explained partial load coefficients were developed for loads distributed over a length span equal to 0 0.2 l1 remember the intervals are fixed that is 0 0.2 right however loads acting over longer portions of span may be considered by summing the remember if the load comes under 0.2 l1 distance that should be considered as partially distributed load but if the load is distributed over a longer portion right if the load is distributed right you see here um, let's say you see here now or in our case basically you see this is the drop panel so you see the drop panel is basically my drop panel is five feet right so this is uh, you can say this is five feet now although 0 0.2 times of l1 that is 30 it comes out to be six feet so this portion is out of the drop panel so this drop panels comes under the interval of 0 0.2 l1 right if let's say the load is distributed more than 0 
times let's say 0 0.4 it is the five it is not five feet it is eight feet it is ten feet so you we have to sum up right first of all we have to find out mna for 0 0.2 interval then we have to find out 0 0.4 interval and then we have to add up right those coefficients this is basically what they mean to explain you see for example if the partial loading extends over 0 0.6 l1 then the coefficients corresponding to three consecutive three consecutive 0 0.2 l1 intervals are to be added three consecutive means when 0 times up l1 when 0 0.2 times up l1 when 0 0.6 times up l1 so we have to find out for these three consecutive intervals and when we have, then we have to add up those intervals but in the present case as you see here that our drop panel size is 5 feet and 0 0.2 times up l1 that is 30 it comes out to be 0. Point, uh, uh, let me rub it right let me rub it this one and this one right this is basically my 0. Point to right which is outside the drop panel so i will consider only this portion right i will consider just only this portion and i will first of all i will assume let's say my a equals to zero right my a equals to zero then my b will be remember b minus a will be 0 0.2 here i am is using b minus a equals to 0 0.2 right when a equals to 0 this means b equals to 0 0.2 so i am considering this interval all right in this case i will find out my mnf1 all right mnf then uh, the loading intensity is uniform there is okay then i will assume that this is basically this is 1 remember this is 1 this is 0. Point uh, here we have 0 0.4 0 0.6 but I will consider uh, next time uh, for the next portion for the next interval I will consider this drop panel right so here 0 0.8 time of L1 uh, let me calculate it uh, bring me uh, if I find out 0 0.8 times of 30 I will get 24 so 24 30 subtracted by 24 from 24 i will got 6 feet so again 0 i will consider just only 0 0.8 and i will ignore 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 because in that case my loading is uniformly distributed and i will use uh, the uniform loading moment coefficients so one time i will assume a equals to 0 then i will assume a equals to 0 0.8 all right 0 0.8 so if, if if i'm using a equals to 0 0.8 then my b equals to 1 remember why because here if i plug the value of 0 0.8 i will bring it to the outside 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 i will got 0 point i will got 1 right so you must remember these points these points are very important to use these graphs these tables sorry and uh, here we have we do all the calculations right uh, here mm, bring me right here yes mm. here you see mnf1 i just calculate this is for uniform loading right so i already explained this now this is for fixed in moment when b minus a equals to 0 0.2 right when a equals to 0 when a equals to 0 okay so in that case mnf2 will be 0 0.0163 you have to interpolate the values how you can do it let me show you one calculation right here mm. this is for 0 0.0926 but here you see mnf2 uh, this is for z a equals to 0 right a equals to 0 and then a equals to 0 right 0 0.25 h and 0 0.5 h right so i got all the values for a equals to 0 these values from the same tables 
let me show you these values uh, right here um, okay write this one so here we have 0 0.00 and 0 0.10 so 0 0.0157 and 0 0.0160 i will use these values you see here 0 0.01 and this one right so this is my the my required value this is 0 0.158 for from 0 0.25 h and from 0 0.5 h table i got this one right so I have to interpolate the value for 4.25 inch, right? So my required value is 0 0.0163. So this is my required value one. And the next, for the next portion, right? For the next portion, which is this one, uh, this portion. So in that case, I will consider my A equals to 0 0.8, right? So when I consider 0 0.8, I do the same calculation, right? This one from here. And uh, remember, in this case, as the drop panel size is same to this one. So that why the value calculated for this portion will be remain same for this one as well, right? So for that portion, right? MNF3, which is MNF3, will also be equal to 0 0.8. 0 1 6 right where it is this one this way 0 0.0163 right so you have to interpolate the value for this one you have to do by yourself for a equals to 0 0.8 right this is very important calculation you must understand how to use these calculations now in your uh, after finding out your flex and movement coefficients, you have to find out, uh, you have to use and run your movement distribution tables. Uh, what we have to do here, uh, this is simple, we have joined 1, 2, 3, 4, you see here join 1, 2, 3, at join 2 we have 2, 1, 2, 3 member, at join 3 we have 3, 2 and 3, 4 member, right? And members are 1, 2, 2, 1, these are the members this is the distribution factor we already calculated these values carryover factor is taken by from the calculations from the tables okay from those four tables i already explained this in lecture number 18 and the fixed and moment coefficients right you have to multiply that coefficient which we got for this for the for the one two member and you find this 677.6 right and uh, here are the calculations you see here that uh, where it is this one right factor dead load okay this is 174 and factor live load is this one and factor load total load is 270 psf right after that remember for slab and for drop panel so for drop panel loading is different while for slab loading is different so then we will use the fixed and movement coefficient formula and here you see for the slab remember for the slab we have to use because in slab we have a uniformly distributed load okay so that why we are using the uniformly distributed load uh, coefficient which i already explained right here in this case right my fixed end moment constant is 0 0.09 but in this case when I am considering the drop panel okay the the non prismatic case then the coefficient is different right um, so uh, I already explained this now remember this is for one end and this is for the other end right you see because we have to take the uh, sum up the portions of the intervals are the intervals so that why we are considering the intervals mnf1 mnf2 mnf3 this is my mnf1 this is for uniform loading case but this is for partial loading because remember this is the partial loading due to uh, drop panel because 
here you see the loading partial loading due to drop panel and here again we have partial loading due to drop panel right Dr load starts from this point ends at this point similarly start from this point and ends at this point and again we have a uniform loading due to slab okay so here we have mnf1 and here we have mnf2 right mnf2 and here we have mnf3 so we find out the coefficients and uh, those coefficients are 0 0.0163 and 0 0.0 0 0.064 okay this is wrong 0 0.064 is the drop panel load and 0. Point, uh, this one is wrong 0 0.064 which is the drop panel loading so we find out the effects and moment is this one and you see here all right uh, here remember this kind of moment is positive and this kind of moment is negative similar this is positive this is negative right this is negative and this is positive okay so you don't need to be confused okay i thoroughly explain this in from lecture number one to lecture number 10 go there and watch those lectures do the rest of the calculation by yourself and the final moments are these moments these are the unbalanced moment right and uh, we will transfer these moments to the columns right now as remember this is very important check that when the slab system basically fulfill the uh, ddm limitations okay those limitations which uh, basically the limitations which uh, we will use in the calculation of direct design method if full, those limitations are fulfilled then we will use uh, an equation right uh, we will we will we will do a check right and that check is basically uh, you will see here that what will be that check that check will be let me show you here right i think so this one factor moment used for design positive and negative factor moments for the slab system in the direction of analysis are plotted and figure this uh, not this one right let me discuss it yes this one this is the limitation this code is basically says that if the limitations of the direct design method is same right so these are the checks are the limitations of the direct design method and here we see that the limitations of the direct design method is fulfilled now we will use a check a check is that that the static movement which is calculated from this equation basically you know that in direct design method we use this equation and we find out the static moment so the code says that this is the code that you can reduce right you can reduce your uh, because you see here that we got the moments um, from the moment distribution table one moment here one moment here right this is positive this is negative so the 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 average of this positive and uh, this negative moment should be equals to or should be less than this value if it is more than this value so we will reduce that value to this value right so uh, our um, here you see this is at 12.8 feet cap now you see here n spans in n spans the average of um, the movements in the n span 349.6 this is this this moment right and this one is this moment from the moment distribution table divided by 2 we will average it and we add the positive moment right the mad moment right this is 349.6 is the mad value so this the sum of all these moments the sum of all these moments must be equal to this one if the slab system fulfill the direct design method limitations remember the sum of all the 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 average of this movement and this movement plus the positive movement the maximum positive movement if we add up these the average of this one and this one plus this one which is 919.3 feet cap 
this movement must be less than this one right SA code criteria basically it explain this if it is more than this value we can reduce this value to this one but you have to use this check only you have to use this check only when your slab system fulfill the criteria or the limitations of direct design method this is one important conditions in the interior span you see again this movement is more than this one so we will reduce these values we will reduce these values to this value right how to reduce it it is simple you just divide this movement by this one this is the value or the factor you just need to multiply this factor with with this value and with this value and then take the average right so we multiply this 0 0.8 at 4 right with the 721.9 this one and then we multiply this factor with the uh, 197.3 right this is the positive moment maximum moment so again we add up these two values dividing by 2 with the positive value this one so we got at 12.8 fit cap. Now this is this these values are adjusted, right? This is very important, and I already explained this in lecture number 10, I think so. In lecture number 10 and 11, I think so. I already explained these conditions. Okay, so we have to adjust the static movement, right? Now this step is very important. Therefore, I I explained this. Now let me share one thing more remember this is the equation to find out remember these are the moment this is the end moment right uh, let me show you here this is this value right and uh, here we have this is this is negative this one and then again we have positive this one and then again we have this one right so this is 331.7 this is minus 807 now we need to find out the uh, because the moment diagram will be looks like in this shape right so we, f we need to find out the maximum movement so in those lectures which I think so in lecture num from lecture number 5 to lecture number 10 I did these calculations in Excel I thoroughly explained though these things but this this equation can be used this equation can be used M not right minus MUL the left end movement plus the right end movement divided by 2 but remember this equation will be used when both the movements left and right movement are same due to you see where m0 is the movement at the mid span for a simple beam that is q u l1 uh, l2 into l1 squared divided by 8 when the end movements are not equal right the maximum movement in the span does not occur at the mid span but its value is close to that mid span for this example positive movement in the span 1 2 so here they basically calculate this 349.6 by using this equation right and uh, here is the diagram to understand this equation here is the diagram you see this is the end movement 331 from the table this at 07.6 from the table this is the uniform distributed load this is 8.1 how i got this uh, you know 0 0.270 times 30 you got 8.1 okay remember this is very important as i already explained this here um, in the in the slab portion the total load is you uh, 270 so you see this is the factor loading this is psf this loading is distributed to per square feet so you need to multiply it with the width are uh, the width of the panel and the width of the panel yes that is l2 so you got the load per kip per feet run right so if you multiply 30 with the 2 0 0.270 you got at 0.1 which is the load distributed due to the slab right so you see here if you multiply 30 with 0.27 you got at 0.1 similarly due to the drop panel you see here the drop panel loading is 0.064 you multiply this with 30 you got the 0.64 kip per feet right so this is the way how i got this diagram and these moments is from movement distribution table 
the drop panel distance is 5.83 from this side it is 5 feet from the face of the column from, from the center line of the column right and this is the total distance in between the drop panels you see this is the loading due to drop panel this is the loading due to slab loading right this is the shear force diagram which i got here and remember how i got this 109.3 so i already explained this whole procedure how to draw shear force diagram how to draw the movement diagram and how to find out this maximum moment right and i think so from lecture number six to lecture number 10 you watch those lectures i thoroughly explain these points how to find out this distance x okay where the shear is zero and at this point your moment will be maximum but remember here the maximum moment is 368 but from that formula they got this the maximum moment is 349.6 but actually the loading is the maximum moment the positive moment is maximum positive moment is 368 right uh, i do the same calculation in the tab and i got uh, this diagram 109.318 in the e tab this is 140 i also get the same values 140.69 this is the loading right and uh, this is the distance 7.20 from the left support right and the maximum moment is from the ETF 366 all right so uh, our maximum moment positive moment is 366 but from that formula they basically got the 349.6 right so this is the slab loading this is the drop panels and again they add those uh, left and right moments right uh, this is basically this whole give you the static moment this is m naught and these two values is due to the left and right moments right uh, next we have to do that check right similarly um, as we did in the lecture number uh, lecture number one to lecture number 10 we considered the moment at the face of the column right so that why we have to consider the fast moment but remember Mm. positive and negative factor movements for the slab system in the direction of analysis are plotted in figure 12 the negative movements used for design are taken at the faces of support right rectangle section are equivalent rectangle for circular polygon section but not at a distance greater than 0 0.175 l1 i already explained this condition uh, you see 20 by 12 divided by 2 this is the distance 0 0.83 feet is the face of the column it must be less than 0 0.175 times 30 it is the ACA code section right and I explained th this in those lectures so 5 to 5 so this is less than so that why we will use this distance use the face of the supporting this is the loading diagram you see in the middle this is at point 1 I already show it at point 1 plus 0 0.64 you got at point 0.74 and uh, this is the SP slab analysis right and these dotted lines basically represent the fast shear right and these these values 246.5 are the um, fast moments the fast the fast the middle moment the maximum positive moment is 349.5 this one is 396.95 and this one 623 so this is maximum 246.5 this is fast right so how to calculate fast moments i already explained this uh, in lecture number one to lecture number 10 please go there and watch those videos you will understand how to find out fast moment and how to do all these steps right these are the limitations of ddm method so the limitations of the ddm method is fulfilled right here so we will have to check you will use that check and i already explained that how to minimize how to reduce your uh, maximum moments right uh, now remember this is our uh, in the for the interior panel right for the interior panel this is the negative moment and this is the positive moment instead of 197 we will use 174 and instead of 623.4 no not this one uh, the actual value is not 623 the actual value is a uh, 
So you have to multiply this. So the actual value is 638.2 feet cap, right? And then we have to find out the fast moment. This is very important. Now again, uh, we have to distribute the moments into the column strip and into the metal strip. So you already know this calculation. I have thoroughly explained this in those lectures from lecture number one to 10. You watch those lectures, you will understand how to find out the coefficients, right? And uh, now uh, these are the, um, these are the, this is the end span, this is the interior span because remember, the movement which we got here in the about diagram are the center line movements are the right so this these movements are basically for the whole 30 feet span right now we have to distribute those movements into the column strip and metal strip by using the coefficients okay so the exterior negative movement is 246 the positive movement is 249 and this one 695 and 623 and 197.3 right so this one will be fixed right and uh, this negative moment is 623 we already calculated right now um, remember they are not basically reducing the these moments okay they are using the same values which they already calculated from the fast moment right now um, percentage distribution at the at the exterior end, you we already know 100% movement will be absorbed at the exterior no and 0% movement will be distributed to the metal strip, right? So that why total movement will be absorbed at the in the column strip. 60% will be the column strip, while the rest of the 40% will go toward the metal strip. 75 will be in the column, while the rest of similarly, this is the distribution. Please go and watch these lectures. You will understand how to distribute. Uh, the movement into the and then this these lectures as well uh, into the column strip and into the metal strip so these are the final movements right now right which is in the column strip and these are the movements which are in the metal strip so we have to design the steel reinforcement now for this moment and for this moment right uh, you see here this is my metal strip and uh, you see here this is the column strip right so L minimum by 4, L minimum by 4, these are the column strip and uh, in the uh, this direction are in the y direction and this is in the x direction, right? So next what we have to do, we have to design. So flexural reinforcement, so this one is the fast move, uh, the exterior movement at this point, right? So at this point the movement is 246.5 feet cap. D average we already know 12.75 inch and we have to assume JD which is the lower arm we can assume it from 0 0.9291 to 0 0.95 times of D and assume JD is equal to 0 0.95 times of D so our JD is 12.11 okay and column strip width is this one metal strip width is this one okay you must watch those these videos you so you must watch those uh, lectures from lecture number one to in both playlist the the design of flatless system and the design of uh, flat system by equivalent frame method right so i thoroughly explain those okay so you must watch those lectures so as is distributed from this equation and again recalculate okay and then you have to find out your c value right and then find out this epsilon t value which is more than 0 0.005 so this means if epsilon t value is more than 0. Point, this means our phi value is 0. 0.9 is okay right i already explained this whole procedure in so many videos in my available on my channel please go and search the design of continuous beams on my channel you find out this whole calculation a is, is finally 4.357 inch square the slab have two thicknesses in the column strip 14.25 inch for the slab with the drop panel and 10 inch in the slab without the drop panel so the wetted slab thickness this is very important right we have to use the wetted slab thickness because you see here in some region you see this is uh, 5 feet and 5 and 10 feet region you have a thickness of 14.25 feet while the rest of 20 feet 
right we have a slab thickness of 10 inches so how to find out the wetted thickness of the slab so this is the equation 14.25 into 30 by 3 because in 10 feet we are using 14.25 inch while in while 10 inch within the distance of 20 feet so that why 30 by 2 minus 30 by 3 right in this region you see here in this region this is 10 feet and this is 10 feet so in this region we, we are using 10 inch and in this region 30 by 3 we are using this one so the wetted thickness is 12.83 this is not difficult i already discussed this right in my previous lectures now a is minimum so in a is minimum we will use the wetted thickness okay this is important and the this is the width of the slab this is the column strip width remember so 4.157 which is less than this one okay and its maximum is two times of hw and this one so 25 point which is more than 18 inch we cannot you uh, increase the spacing from 18 inches provide 10 number six bars with a is 4.40 inch square and s is 180 is the total column strip width divided by 10 because we are using 10 number of bars so it will give us 18 inches which is less than or equal to s maximum so it is okay remember if this spacing is more than 18 inches we cannot use that spacing we will use the maximum spacing that is 18 inches remember now based on this whole calculations we do all the calculations for all these moments which you are see right here okay the wet is fixed that is uh, in the column strip and in the middle strip column remember the same in the column strip remember the depth is 12.75 inch in the positive region in the positive region we will use at 1.50 inch remember because in the positive movement region okay you already know the diagram that uh, the movement diagram okay so in this region basically here the slab thickness is 10 inch but in the negative movement region the slab thickness is 14.75 so that why we are using the wet and the uh, this the average effective depth of the slab right and similar again and again right and because in the metal strip already we know that the slab thickness average thickness will be used right uh, we already calculated these thicknesses in lecture number 18 right and the calculated slab reinforcement is this one and we have to compare this with the negative minimum values so you see here this value is more than this one so okay here this one is more than okay this one is more than okay and this one so we have you we have to use this one right and similarly here we will use this one similarly this one right the number of bars reinforcement provided these reinforcement will be provided and these reinforcement will give us the total amount of steel okay you just need to multiply 10 with the number of six bar area that is 0 0.441 so you multiply 10 number six you got 4.40 similarly 13 with number six bar area that is 0 0.441 you got 5.2 right so this is the total amount of steel which we are providing in the column strip and metal strip right in the interior span in the column strip we are using 10 number six bar while in the metal strip we are using 10 number six bar i again request you to please watch flat slab system design and available on my youtube channel overall 15 lectures i already uploaded how to place these bars how to find out the spacing how to detail this kind of reinforcement that there is a complete explanation available on, on in those lectures so you must watch those lectures to understand these calculations and remember the detailing of such reinforcement is very complicated so you must need to thoroughly understand those lectures uh, before watching these lectures right now uh, two way flats concrete floor with drop panel system analysis and design right this part is very important and i will explain this in my next lecture that is lecture number 20 because uh, i have already uploaded lecture number 14 15 16 17 
and the unbalanced moment and the unbalanced moment gamma f i already explained this i did so many cal examples over it so i request you please go there and watch those lectures because you don't understand if you don't watch those lectures thank you for watching see you in next lecture